Anybody who fights me really is a joke as far as beating me. Ken Norton can't beat me. George Fulmer can't beat me. Joe Frazier can't beat me. I know me, all so. that stuff. I want to talk about Coopman. They think he's a joke in Europe. Well, we'll see. I put, if they don't like it in Europe or in America, they don't have to come or pay. I know the press is here, the world is here, and all the European press is coming. And uh, all the fighters that they said was nothing gave me my most worst fights. So some of them awkward, Chuck Webner, Blue Lewis, Ron Lau, Ken Norton first fight was nothing. He broke my jaw. This fellow's a man. He's 28. He's six years young. He's a heavyweight. He can fight. He might not be as good as me. I know he, I don't believe he's going to win, but he, I have to get ready, and anything can happen. I could get cut. I could get butt. My jaw get broke. Most likely, I'm going to win. But who knows? That's what they're paid to see, the unknown. It's got to be the heavy favorite, right? All right, Tom, let's go up ringside and pick up the referee's instructions. The referee is Ishmael Quinones Falu. And he'll be talking to Koopman. I'm not sure in what language. He doesn't understand any English. His language is Flemish. Now Muhammad Ali looking over. He went over and took a strange look <laughs> at Koopman just a minute ago. He can't believe that he can't cite this guy because he can't understand him. All Koopman did all week was smile at everybody, including Muhammad Ali. He also winked at him. <laughs> Let's pick up the instructions now. Don't miss the bulldog days. And your name is Palou, is the referee. I'm San Juan. Let's see if we can hear the judges by the way are Ishmael Fernandez and Roberto Ramirez the referee and both judges are from San Juan and the knockdown rule automatically is waived you've just got to keep getting back up as long as uh, the challenger or the champion feels it's right and you can't be saved by the bell Don King just came by and said, give him a great show, guys. We'll try. Round one. Ali with the hands very high. Cooper's supposed to be a guy that moves in fast. A jab by Ali. The fastest. But look out for the short right hand. That's the fastest punch of any heavyweight of all time. And Ali's there. Ooh, a head punch combination the left tag guard. Cooper at 206 pounds. Built more like a linebacker. Ooh, a straight right hand by Ali. Pops right on the cheek. A flurry on Cooper. He gave him a little roll with the hips. There's that jab. That's two jabs. Cooper's face is already red. The last two didn't do much. Ali is really toying with John Pierre Koopman in round one. Ali is 226. He's three and a half inches taller than Koopman with a lot more experience. Koopman's left eye has already started to swell. Ali had a cold all week. He had a fire in the hotel. Had to breathe smoke. Looks like he's overweight at 226, and he's still the champion of the world, isn't he? There's the jab. He said, I'm good enough to beat most men fighting with a cold. And I mentioned Koopman is rated about 16th or 17th in the world, according to Ring Magazine. Not exactly a contender. Ranked number one in Europe. He really hasn't had too much experience. Side of the country of Belgium only once. He went to Norway in 73 and lost that fight and stayed home ever since. Record as a pro is 24 3. There's the shuffle. The great thing going for Koopman is that he's in fantastic condition. The chopping trees and fighting the champion of the world are two different things. He's got a big tree to chop tonight. We're rope it open right now. A valley right above us. Oh, left, right, a lead right hand landed. You're right, the face is red, Pat, on Koopman already. A minute to go in round one. Ali's round so far, no question about that. Watch the right hand, though. It comes right across, and good fighters say you don't even see that right hand right there. There it is, Pete. Sort of a semi right hook, and he landed that one easily. Four or five unanswered. One of the most relaxed athletes you'll ever see anywhere. Muhammad Ali. Just took a little glance out of the crowd. Spoke to somebody. Koopman is only uh, a pro for three and a half years. What an opportunity. 
opportunity for a young man, though, to get a title shot in three and a half years. Less than 10 seconds left in round one. Mouthpiece is cut out by Muhammad Ali, like maybe the cold uh, is affecting his nose a little bit. He did spit out his mouthpiece, which makes me think maybe he isn't breathing quite like he, you know, would like to, and it's good shape with the cold and all. But he is a funny man, even when he's serious. <laughs> said that his favorite fighter has always been Joe Frazier. He's copied his style. So that's ever going forward. Joe Frazier is not uh, Muhammad Ali's favorite fighter. They've had three pretty fair country contests. Fair, I'd say. Remember the thought that Ali fights only in one minute first. He's sort of been picking his shots as to what he wants to do uh, all three minutes. Flanders can only go one way, right on in, has Ali in the neutral corner, but not for long. Ali at 226. Koopman in long red trousers. They're down almost to his knees. And right now, a very red face. 112 left in round two. This is a cut on the left eye of Koopman. Look at the jab, Pat. And then the fake of the ball all under. He is just tying with him right now. He gave him about three double fakes and didn't throw a punch. Only two losses for Ali. 49 and two he is. A loss to Norton and of course a loss to Frazier. And he got back and revenged both. And a very active champion. A very active champion for the first two rounds of tonight as well. Now he's just holding the gloves down. Ooh, that jab comes out of the, off the hip almost. Ali just toying with Koopman. 30 seconds left in round two. Scheduled for 15. Koopman uh, used to be a cyclist and a soccer player. Looks like he's on a bicycle now, running into trouble. Though. The uppercuts, Koopman covers up pretty well. Supposed to have a fair left hook. We haven't seen the hook. Ali's catching those with his open palms. He got one through a little bit. Don Dunphy is with us at ringside. What do you think, Don? Well, up to now, I can see that Ali has had more trouble with some of his sparring partners than he's had with uh, Jean-Pierre Coop and the Lion of Flanders, who may leave here as the pussycat of Ponce Playa Beach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so far, I don't think he's hit Muhammad Ali. All right, Don. We're back into round three now. He just went out and sort of leaned on the fellow from Belgium, the Lion of Flanders. They have attempted to repair the damage to Koopman's left eye, but a little work on that, and it might be closed. Cut on the lower portion of the left eye. Ali now just holding him up and wrapping up the 206-pounder like he's a baby boy. He has a five-inch reach advantage, along with every other advantage that he has. 20 pounds, four inches, three and a half inches in height. And right now, he's just dancing. Think how frustrating it must be, though, for a young professional to be in there trying to do his best, and Ali is right now going for a walk in the park. There's the right-hand lead. Not much on it, only because he didn't want to put anything on it. Sellout crowd at Roberto Clemente Coliseum getting a little impatient now with the champion because he's not pressing things a little bit more. Boy, watch it when he gets on that toe, though, and throws that the left jab or throws that quick right hand. It is a very quickly loaded punch. There's the hook. Some people don't know it, but he has done a lot of great work with the quick hook of Ali. Of course, the right hand, everyone knows about that one. He faked everything then. Yeah, I think Don Dunford is right. A minute ago, I don't think Cooper's hit Ali yet. Ooh, there were 
four jabs and a straight right on the forehead. That was a good stiff jab that time. I ain't another. On that ringside, we could hear those. Got one left hand in. There's that jab back for Ali. Cooper trying to cover, trying to move in. That's the only thing he knows. Not to go. The third round. Schedule 15. Just keeps you at bay. Now the fake of the right hand, and he turns back. Ali just touching him with the overhand right, faking the bolo occasionally. It looks like that bothers Koopman very much. The underneath thing. There's the jab. It's not that Koopman hasn't been trying, he just hasn't been getting anything to try with. There's that short right hand. Koopman catches it. On the pork chop side there on the left side. There's the right hand again. Ooh, a lead right hand. Solid flush on the cheek. Right over the left hand is carried very low by Koopman. Another one. He's got to get... Ali looks a little bit more on the serious side right now. He's got the hands high and he's not joking as much. The left jab that he threw out this time was behind the good boxing stance with the right hand covered. Boy, that's four straight jabs. Koopman, again, has only la landed perhaps one punch in the first three. And of no value. Ali faking the hook. The left hand still being carried low by Koopman. The right hand will come right over by Muhammad Ali. He might have hit him as he came in. That's the first blow I think he's consequence. There's that left jab, and this one was shot out by the champion. Two, three, four. Catching most of them in that left eye. It's already cut. Two jabs and followed in by Koopman. Ali measuring. Koopman no longer coming straight on. Ooh, the left hook with a straight right hand by Ali. That was blocked. The jab made it. The right hand makes it. Two right hands. Size to gain the close on the challenger now as he rallies and throws a combination. There's the hook by Ali, two of them. Now he's onto the ropes. And this is with the right hand coming off. Ali. Koopman said before the fight, I really don't know how good I am. He's finding out. What a way to learn on the job training with the heavyweight champion. Perhaps one of the greatest boxer fighters of all time. Ali picking his spots now, and Koopman's face is beat red. Even as Ali withdraws, he manages to land three or four unanswered blows. The hook was partially blocked. Under with the hook, the straight jab. Boy, he's quick. Is he? Minute to go in round four. Left to the right. Takes a couple, one around the heart, the right hand, not much on it by Cooper. Jab was blocked. Ooh. The left hook by Ali. He just pulls the trigger so easily. And when he turns it over that way, he can drill you with it. There's a short right hand, not much on him yet. It appears he could really pull the trigger whenever he wants to with something and do the job. Not that Ali wants to torture this man. He says he has no feeling one way or another about Jean-Pierre Koopman. He hasn't been able to talk to it. He understands only Flemish. Right hand leads. Cuff. And a cuff there by Ali. There's the jab again. Two hooks off of it. Round's almost over. Third or fourth. The upper cover the right hand. Official or unofficial cards right now. There's Muhammad Ali with... Dini Brown and of course Angelo Dundee who's going to get out now before the warning. Ali very relaxed and not even sitting on a stool. There's the warning buzzer and they're conversing like they're outside looking at a shrine around here in San Juan or something. They're yeah, looking across the ring to see what kind of shape this man is in. The Lion of Flanders has been very tame so far. Ali shoots out two big jabs. Seems like the start of each round now he Affirms what everybody already knows that I'm here. Don't forget it. Ooh, the combination, the quick hook. And he's just standing in one place. Ooh, the 
stiff jab. First of all, it wouldn't be right not to thank Almighty God, Allah, for my victory. I want to say hi, salam alaikum to all the Muslims in America, mainly to the chief minister, the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad, and my children, my wife, and all my fans, and also my man, Mr. Tom Jordan, great disc jockey in Dallas, Texas. But the fight itself, it was a tough fight. Man, I look like it, but the man hit hard. Wasn't he, it really a tough fight? Yes, he was awkward. He was awkward. He could take a lot of punches. He carried that left hand so low, I thought you were going to, you know, you laid the right hand on him almost at will, and yes. you jabbed him right out of his mind. Yes, he could take a lot of punches. And, uh, I hit him with a hard punch. It dazed him, but it didn't knock him out. His eye was cut. I hope he's not cut. Seriously. But I enjoyed the fight, and everything was nice. Also, I want to say hello to all my friends in Louisville, Kentucky, and Mel Sloan, and all my friends and school friends, and... Uh, James X. Webster and all my friends down in Louisville, and also again, I salam alaikum to all my brothers and sisters and the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad. All right, let me ask you a personal question just about the number of people that want to use some of your time up. Is it beginning to bug you everywhere you go? Everybody says you're the greatest, but they always want a little piece of you, Muhammad. Well, it's natural. <laughs> 
having a slight cold. Yes, I know. It's natural when you're out of, uh, when you're on top, the people are pulling for you, such as down now. But it's all good while it lasts, but you never let it go to here. The main thing, material things in the world don't last long, and we can't take them with us, and I'm trying to get my spirit together, my soul, where after I'm out of boxing, I can still have something to look forward to, and that's God himself. You seem like you really have it together now, though. I mean that. I've known you for about 10 years, and it just seems to me like you really have it together. Well, after talking with the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad and studying Islamic teachings, it makes you wise and it makes you civilized. Okay, now you really had nothing against Jean-Pierre Coupe. No, he's a nice, nice man, real gentleman. He was smiling all during training, and even when I got in the ring. What's the future? He's just had a chance at the title. Uh, from here on, I'm going on to try Jimmy Young. There's a lot of talk about Mr. Ken Norton. I want Norton bad after destroying Frazier and Fullman. People still think Norton can win. We want to give Norton a shot at the title soon. We want to give George Fullman another shot. I plan to get out at the end of 76, and it's up to the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad on what I do from there because I would like to be a minister representing the Islamic team. In America. I want to say also to all my friends and fans out there, you use the commercials and you promote everything on my name, so I want to promote one or two things. I want everybody to read that Balalia News, formerly Mohammed Speaks. It's Balalia News. Read that newspaper and find out what's happening in the world. All right, Mohammed, take care. Again, the fight was over rather quickly, not unexpected, and perhaps just the way it happened. Patrick, how you doing down there? Well, I'm in a little confusion. A lot of people climbing all over me. But as you just heard, Muhammad Ali and just saw Muhammad Ali has successfully defended his heavyweight championship. We'll have more from San Juan right after this stairs with Jack Whitty successfully defending his heavyweight crown. A fifth round knockout against the Lion of Flanders, Jean-Pierre Koopman. Now let's go to Tom Brookshire with Angelo Dundee. Angelo, your man came out and just threw the jab, 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 jab. Koopman never really had a chance. Well, he never gave him a shot to do his thing. Muhammad did his thing like I felt he would. And he got him at the end of that left hand was goodbye, Daddy. Because once Muhammad could set the tempo with his left jab, ball game's all over. You know, he actually, when he does flurry, like during the knockout sequence, they're so fast you couldn't call them if you knew what they were. Does he I know, know what it. they all are? I'm curious as heck to see a replay because I don't know what shot got the guy out of there. I know he got cut at the same time he got dropped. The same instant, when the kid started blinking his eye, they, I noticed he had two little rips over his eye. Mohammed once told me that the guys that are big enough to muscle him are too slow, and the guys that are quick enough are too small. Is there anybody, is Norton the, maybe the only guy that can stand up and fight him head to head? Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. We fight Norton, he knocks out Norton this time, because this is the better fighter than the one that fought Norton. Muhammad's really come along with his thinking, his maturing, setting on the balls of his feet. He can really bang now. I mean, which is going to be shown right here. Because he, he, he can take you out with any kind of a shot. They go in the right hand, boom, left uppercut. They come in sequence. Good left hook counter. Remember I told you how to go left hook? Here's a right uppercut. And since he no longer has to dance all the way and uh, does flatten out, that he does have more punching power than ever before, doesn't he? Right uppercut did it, Tom. I just wonder what did it, but that's what did it. How much training did he really get a chance to do, Angelo? Uh, I, I mean, mean, you he said trained, two weeks, but... No, no, he trained uh, six... Uh, we were here a month. He trained two months up in camp. No, he was in good shape. Uh, the weight showed at 226. And I told him, uh, to get in shape for anybody, you got to be in shape. Do you want him at 226? Is that his best fighting? Well, not, if he ever fights below it, I'll be very, very disappointed because his best weight is 225, 226. Angelo, you are selling disappointed, my man. Thank you very much. The trainer, of course, of Muhammad Ali. Let's go back up to Jack Whitaker. Jackson? Yeah. As I was saying before I was interrupted, I think what we have here is an underview more than an overview of this fight. We know that we know a lot more about Jean-Pierre Koopman than we did 20 minutes ago. The whole feeling here this week in San Juan has been one of quietness and subduedness, much more so than any other of the 14 defenses that Ali has made of his title. And a lot of that came from the champion himself who keys what the mood is around his fights. He himself was subdued. And then, too, there was Jean-Pierre, who does not speak English, so no dialogue could be stirred. It was a very quiet week, even in the training sessions, which had about them a feeling almost of formal theater rather than the hurly-burly of the prize fight ring. The fight itself was a classic example of those easy fights a champion takes now and again, and which indeed he is entitled to. This was a rest for Ali on his way to a meeting with Norton later on in the year. 
It also proves once again why underdogs seldom win, while real champions like Muhammad Ali are always up to the mark and while the odds are always right. For Koopman, he could be said of him too, as it's been said of others before him, that he was courageous and valiant. And he will get a, a piece of boxing lore with this little night with Muhammad Ali. The Lion of Flanders will go into boxing history along with such subagettes as the game Chicken, the Hard Rock from Down Under, and the Bayonne Bleeder. And we hope maybe his private life will be a little easier after this moment in Ali's spotlight. As you know, Jean-Pierre is a stonecutter and a sculptor who works on religious art, uh, statues. As Red Smith said, he chips away at saints. Well, don't we all chip away at saints? But Jean-Pierre couldn't chip away at Mohammed tonight. Mohammed Ali still remains a very formidable person. He has a rendezvous with age coming up very soon, age w which will take away the speed of his hands and creep up his legs and take down his stamina. It might happen tomorrow or six months from now or a year, but it will happen. But until it does, he remains the most exciting athlete of our time and perhaps the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. Here's Pat Summerall. Okay, Jack, thank you very much. You know, as we mentioned during the fight, John Pierre Cookman said, I don't really know how good a fighter I am. Perhaps now he can think about it, reflect a little bit on how good he is because he was in against one of the best. We're going to come back after this message and take another good look at the knockout. Don, let's go back now. I have to be very honest with you. I did not see the key punch, the one that finally finished it off. Let's look at it again. Well, it was a series of jabs uh, followed by that solid right hand. Koopman's left eye had been closing and he was, uh, the jab was even closing a little more and he wasn't getting a good uh, shot at that right hand coming at him finally. Here's a mark. He's a mark from Ali's punches. You can see that. That's the big right hand. It was an accumulation of punches. That short right was probably the most devastating of the lot. Koopman kept coming on, which uh, was not good for him. They say all fighters have courage and some have more than others. He's got plenty of courage, but that's not enough. There he goes down, and there was Muhammad Ali's successful defense. I was interested in your comments earlier about just how good you think Muhammad Ali is. You go back, uh, as I mentioned before, you've seen 38 covered. 38 heavyweight championship by some 1,600 at all. How good do you think he is? How do you really class him? Well, he could very well be the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. There's no question about uh, speed of hands and speed of feet. He is the fastest heavyweight champion of all time. He takes a terrific punch. I've seen people belabor him on the ropes. Nobody gave anybody more of a beating than Joe Frazier gave Ali in uh, Manila last year, and yet he, uh, he forced Frazier to quit at the end. He's, uh, he's a remarkable athlete.